Hi, I'm Nick Raines from Leica Camera Australia. I have with me the brand new Leica SL3. Uh, this is just a first look at the camera. I'm going to go through the major points um, and the new features and just briefly because they're you know out there in the world and I don't need to go through them in great detail. But there's a couple of smaller points that I want to make about the camera, something that you might not be aware of. So uh, let's get to it. Okay, well, the um, the first thing that you'll notice about this camera when you look closely, uh, in fact, one the first two things you'll notice. First of all, we have a brand new dial right here on the left hand side, and also, as expected, we have a tilt screen just like in the Q3. And that gives you an extra ability to film video, for instance, when you've got the camera on a tripod, you can tilt the screen back and you can look down. It's a very comfortable shooting position. Plus, of course, it gives you the option to shoot from odd angles. And if you're the age that I am, you really hesitate to get down on your knees to photograph those low angles. This really helps a lot, believe me. <laughs> um, the left-hand dial, very interesting addition. It was a surprise when I first got my hands on the camera. I wasn't expecting that. It's fabulous when you're shooting video again because sometimes if the camera's rigged up you can't access the custom function buttons to change the ISO quite so easily and it's really nice to have a physical dial to be able to dial in your ISO. Personally I still use the custom function and the thumb dial to set my ISO but sometimes I will use this dial um, when I'm shooting video so as I said before. The camera has, of course, the same, almost the same sensor as in the Q3 and the M11P and the M11. So if you're familiar with that sensor technology, with the backside illuminated a pixel binning technology with your three resolutions, then you'll know exactly what you're going to get. The image out of this is nothing short of astonishing, as you would expect. The camera has maintained its IP54 rating against dust and spray, so you can shoot with this camera quite confidently in the rain or blizzards or whatever, and it won't have any problems at all. The camera itself is physically slightly smaller. It's about five millimeters less wide on the right hand side. So there's a slightly narrower gap for your fingers between the grip and the lens. It's also about 80 grams lighter, which doesn't half help. It might not sound a great deal, but when you pick the camera up, it's recognizably lighter, which is a great thing. Okay, now there's something here I just want to point out to you, which um, as I alluded to before, there's a couple of features which are a little bit unusual. I'm going to turn the camera around and hopefully you can see on the screen there, if I just get in with a close up, move that in a little bit there, you should be able to see that there are certain icons on the, the back, as you'd expect. This is very, very familiar. But when I go in, into the menus, Bear in mind, I'm doing this upside down, so if I fumble a little bit, you must forgive me. These eight icons along the bottom are now fully programmable. So if I long press on one of them, it takes you into a configuration menu, just like if I was using the custom function buttons on either the back here or the top or the rocker switch on the front down between the lens and the grip. So that means that I can configure this bottom section, these eight icons here, to function as I would choose. The other thing to point out is that all of these icons on the top row and down the side here are also active. So I've got, for instance, where my finger is now, I can toggle on and off the perspective control. The next one down is toggling on and off focus peaking. The next one down is toggling on and off the self timer. So I would configure the self timer in the menus, set it to whatever number of seconds I want. Then I would turn it off in the menus and then I will toggle it on and off here to get to, let's say two seconds and then off. Okay, so this gives you access into many more menu functions than you might expect. And it's the same with the items across the top. You can choose your um, your, feet, your, <laughs> your metering mode, your large DNG or JPEG, your shooting rate, your white balance, uh, and so on. So the camera is really configurable. And the idea is that you should never really need to go into the menus themselves when you're out shooting. The idea is to set the camera up and then with all of these customizable icons and the ones that are fixed on the back here, everything you do should be accessible to you at your fingertips. I have done a video on how to set up this camera, or at least my recommendations on how to set up the camera. It's your camera, you should use it as you see fit. But I have recorded a video going through all of these menu items in great detail and there will be a link in the description below. 
Okay, we've been through the major features of the camera. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail about that because there will be plenty of videos out there and in due course I will record some more videos about some of the more subtle functions and the video function specifically. But let's just have a look at some of the pictures I've been able to take uh, having used the camera for the past few months. This is a picture of one of our trainers uh, in a port factory in Porto. And the reason I put this in is this is shot at 50,000 ISO and hoping it shows up on your screen okay, but you can absolutely read all of the labels on those bottles. The red light that you can see casting across the bottles is in fact the focused illumination light from the camera. And that'll give you an idea just how dark it was. You really had to grope around in the darkness, tripping over things, it was that dark. So I simply set the camera onto 50,000 ISO and let it do its thing. And this is the sort of result it can come up with. Another view of the same um, warehouse, and this is at 12,500 ISO, and you can just see how clean the black and white is. What I'm impressed about is the detail in the wall behind those barrels, which is black on black in very, very low light. That whole scene is quite literally lit by a single light bulb high in the ceiling there. We had the opportunity to shoot some images in the studio and I was encouraged to try the new phase detect auto focus system. Now this is something that is brand new to this camera. It was already implemented in the Q3. In the SL3 we have the ability to do really really high end eye tracking. And this picture shows it up quite well because this is one of my colleagues photographing a model in a studio that we rented. And you can see the studio light on the left. And he was moving from right to left and blocking my view repeatedly. Every time he, he moved to the side so I could see the model, the eye focus just locked back on to her eyes and I never missed a frame. And if I go to the close-up shot here, you'll see that it just simply nailed those eyes every single time. It was never fooled by something moving between the subject and the camera. Very impressive indeed. The other thing, of course, about the camera, and this is not new, but I just wanted to um, make the point about how good it is, is the ability for the camera to shoot at very, very slow shutter speeds with the sensor stabilization. This is a shot using the 90 millimeter setting on the SL on the 24 to 90 on the SL3, and then I shot this at 0.6 of a second handheld. So that's two thirds of a second. That's slightly slower than half a second. And if I zoom in, you'll see just how good that is. Now I had to be careful, and I'm not saying got every single shot sharp probably 50 to 60% of them. But if I was very, very careful and I squeezed that shutter button really gently and I took a very stable stance, I can shoot 90 millimeter at half a second. I think that is quite remarkable. And then this one makes the point even better. It's not 90 millimeters, but this was half a second again. This is just a simple streetscape. And if I zoom in, you'll see how blurred the people are who are walking, but just look at how sharp the lettering is on that sign at the top of the photograph. November last year, I went to Varanasi with some colleagues. I was filming Stephen Dupont and Russell Shakespeare photographing with their M cameras in Varanasi. And I took some images of my own there. So I'll just go through a few of these. Um, I did take the 100 to 400 as well with me, which was uh, very, very useful. And I was able to get some quite useful images. High ISO. Very, very useful. This is the burning gaps. This is 6,400 ISO on the 24 to 90 lens. And again, this image is just so clean for such a high ISO. In a nutshell, if you like the SL2, this camera is simply better on all levels. Everything has been polished or refined or improved. Anything that hasn't changed is probably because there's nothing much you can change. It's pretty much perfect. So it's just a superior camera in all respects. In addition to that, we also have some new um, accessories. And I've got a couple of them here, the ones that I will be using myself. First of all, we have a brand new battery charger, which takes two batteries at a time. Click those both in like that. Now, it's not plugged in, of course, but if I was to plug this into a USB power source of 27 watts or greater, this will charge both batteries in parallel. So you get two batteries in the time that it takes to do one battery. The other thing that I got my hands on recently, and I never had one of these for my SL2, is that is the multi-grip. This allows you to fit the grip on the bottom of the camera 
which I shall do like this. Very, very easy. Close that back. And you should be able to see now, if I just done that up there, it only adds a modest amount to the height. It doesn't weigh as much as it looks like it should. But the key thing here is, first of all, when you hold the camera in this position, which is my normal shooting position, the palm of my hand fits beautifully on the base of the extra grip feels really comfortable. You haven't got that sharp edge. I mean, this camera does have some, you know, reasonably crisp edges to it. This is really comfortable. But more importantly, when you rotate on its side, and that, that's nothing new about these sorts of grips, but it was a revelation to me simply because I haven't used one for so long. You've got the shutter button here. You've got the, this replaces the top dial. And then on the back, you've got a thumb dial here. And there's a grip profile there and this just feels so solid. People tend not to shoot vertical pictures because it's uncomfortable. You have to have, hold the camera like this, but now it's so comfortable and my hand naturally comes around here that shooting vertical pictures becomes much easier. And again, if you are in the store looking at this camera, ask to have a look at one of these because I think you'll go, wow, that just feels so comfortable and it really doesn't make the camera that much more heavy. So highly recommended. Okay, that's enough from me. I've shown you a few pictures. I've explained the features of the camera. I am looking forward to using this camera for the next four or five years until whatever we are offered next comes out. But for now, for me, this is a huge step forward. Um, I have shot extensively with it, maybe 3,000 photographs so far, and I can absolutely confirm that it is an improvement on the previous model in all areas.